Dinner will be served in 15 minutes. Don't mind the others. Just because they don't want you here doesn't mean you're not supposed to be. You just have to seize it. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, it's your homie, Futuristic Mike, and I'm back with another Lovecraft Country video if you're new. This is going to be the recap for Lovecraft Country, Season 1, Episode 2. The title to this episode is Whitey's on the Moon. If you're a fan of Lovecraft Country, if you love Lovecraft Country, hit the like on this video. If you're new to my channel and this is the first time you're finding me, subscribe and turn on those post notifications so when I post videos on Lovecraft Country, you get them. Now in this episode, we got to meet the Brave Whites. Now Tick, Letty, and George are settling in as they get to this mansion. I already knew right from the jump that some things weren't right. You know, Letty had a whole bunch of outfits in her room and she said they fit her like a glove. In George's room, he finds a private library full of his favorite novels. Now, this is just too good to be true. How do they have every single thing that each of them likes? This just don't seem right. But Tick is less inclined to believe in the Braid White's family's generosity. The reason why he's so skeptical about everything is because he soon learns that he's the only one who remembers the monsters from the night before. George and Letty's memories have been wiped clean of anything supernatural or anything weird or anything like that. They don't remember anything. Now the whole time this moment was playing out, I just kept thinking about Jordan Peele's Get Out and stuff like that because it kept giving me Get Out vibes. But eventually the three of them leave the house in search of the mysterious whistle that called off the vampire-like creatures. Now they come across a strange stone tower with yet another weird woman. She was standing guard at the door with two massive big ass dogs that kept barking and shit. Inside the tower, it looks like a room from like a slaughterhouse. It had pig heads dangling from the ceiling. Now Uncle George informs Tick that there is a dungeon-like basement based on the way it is constructed. They theorize that it might be where Tick's father Montrose is being held. Now the three of them start making their journey back to the manor and the group is forced to go through these dark woods and Uncle George makes a revelation about how Tick is connected to the Braithwaites based on something one of them said. The original patriarch, one of the Braithwaites down the line, was known for being kind to his slaves, meaning he likely raped his slave Hannah, who became Tick's great-great-great-great-grandmother. Later in the episode, we find out a lot more about this, and I'll explain that to y'all. But before they make it back, they're attacked by monsters again, now Christina Braithwaite arrives on a horse, calls off the monsters with a whistle, and Uncle George and Letty immediately forget that they were attacked as soon as it happens. Like Letty's like, why do I got dirt on me? And it's just so weird. So I knew something was going on. Now later that night, Christina visits Tick in his room and he asks her to undo whatever spell she's using to block George and Letty's memories, especially as they're starting to think he's experiencing shell shock from the war. They think he's just going crazy. Christina actually does remove the spell, but then she also puts barriers on all of their doors to keep them in prison, to keep them from getting out of their room. All three of them are faced by someone they love in a horrific nightmare sequence. A whole bunch of people from outside the room are watching it and they're literally getting amusement out of it, watching these three freak out. And it's just crazy, man, because these people are so damn weird in this episode. Now Tick ended up seeing a woman that he likely cared for while he was at war, but yet he had to kill. She is the one who called him on the phone in the first episode, so it's hard to say if she's really dead or if he's being haunted by her in more ways than one. Now Letty sees Tick and the two start to have sex before the nightmare version of Tick unzips his pants and releases a very real deadly looking snake. Uncle George sees Dee and the two share a romantic dance, but none of this was real. It was not real at all. Now, Tick and Uncle George are then escorted to a men-only dinner for the sons of Adam. Letty was not invited. In this episode, we learn that Samuel's real goal is to open a door to Eden. He basically wants to seek immortality. 
He wants to restore the world to its natural glory and order, and he needs Tick's blood to do it because, you know, he has a connection to this family. Before the ceremony can take place, Letty, George, and Tick try to save Montrose and escape. They were right about him being kept in that dungeon, but Montrose figured out a way to dig himself out on his own. He came out like some Night of the Living Dead type shit, coming out of the ground and everything. Now the three of them encounter Montrose in the yard before piling into the car and driving off. Unfortunately, one of those invisible force fields is blocking their way out and their escape vehicle is smashed to pieces. Their whole vehicle got folded up and it was just crazy, man. A whole bunch of magic's going on in this episode. Now, Christina and Samuel arrive to stop them from getting away and Samuel shoots both George and Letty. He shoots Letty first and then we see Letty die. And he says he'll only save them if Tick follows his demands and participates in the ceremony. Ultimately, Letty is saved first with the promise to save Uncle George after it's completed. This whole ceremony that they wanted to do was just weird. You know, it ends in disaster with Samuel and the sons turn into stone and the whole place catches on fire. History repeats itself like it did before when Titus tried the same thing years ago. You know, Tick survives and escapes the fire as he follows the ghost of his ancestor out of this house. George, Montrose, and Letty also escape. Now this part right here is sad because Uncle George dies and I guess Samuel never healed him and he bleeds out when they were escaping. It's a devastating end to a very trippy episode. This episode was crazy as hell. You know, I had a feeling Uncle George was not going to live long, but I'm still upset um, that it happened this way. I didn't think that he'd be dying in the second episode. I hope that somehow, some way they can bring him back. Now, as for the three survivors, Atticus, Letty, and Montrose, where do they go from here? The house is completely torn down, so what do they do? I don't think they'll be able to get out of here so easy because I think Christina is still floating around somewhere. Now, what I want to know is what was the deal with Christina birthing that damn cow and pulling out another monster from the inside of that cow? That was just weird in my opinion. Like, when I seen that happening, I was just like, what the hell is going on? That part was weird. Like, this cow literally gave birth to a monster and that was just completely crazy. That was insane. I thought the episode was so solid. I thought it was a very good episode. I might like this episode even better than the first episode. I feel like this season is just going to progress and it's going to get better and better. Um, this is a crazy sci-fi, scary type of vibe and I'm really feeling it. I do have to admit though, I'm confused about a lot of different things in this episode. I think they want us to be confused as of right now. There's a lot of things that we need to see happen in the future when it comes to this show. You know, we have a lot of questions. We need some answers. I'll admit, I'm really confused. And I hope the next episode explains a lot of things like, are the Braithwites really dead? Because that house completely got torn down and I don't know what's going to happen next. I know there's got to be some Braithwites out there still somewhere. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think is going to happen in the next episode? And what did you guys think of episode two, Whitey's on the Moon? Did you guys enjoy this episode? Did you like it as much as I did? I thought it was a solid ass episode, man. This show is fire. This show has banger ass episodes already. I have a feeling it's going to be one of those HBO classic type of shows. And I'm so here for it. I'm so down for this show. It's not even funny. Like, man, I can't wait for the next episode. It's going to be fire. Um, I seen the previews for the next one. I'm going to make my what to expect video. Give you guys that trailer breakdown and break down each clip. You know, I'm going to do it clip by clip. So be on the lookout for that and keep supporting your boy. And I'll be continuing to bring y'all that Lovecraft Country content in the future. If you guys want to donate to the channel to help support the channel, I got links in the description to do so. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And smash that notification bell so you can never miss a video. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. It's your boy Futuristic Mike, and I'll talk to you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.